Salute, my friend. Cheers. Salute. Ugh, Great to go. meet you. Nice to meet you, man. Thanks for having me on. Probably not a good idea to stuff our fat faces with Terry Black's barbecue before we come here. Those, I should take a nap I'm right on, now. I'm, I got a prick in my stomach. <laughs> know, it's awesome. Those beef ribs are insane. Yeah. Oh, my God. That place is so good. That's the one thing that I, you know, Texas barbecue will fucking ruin you. There's only a few other places you can go where you can get barbecue of that caliber. It's insane. You know? All the wood that yeah. they have staged for everything. Yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing. I got an offset smoker for the first time. This uh, company, Sentex Barbecue, they, they built me this grill. And uh, I never, I always cooked on a Traeger, which I love because it's so convenient. You know, you, you oh, see yeah. it on your phone, you know, the temperature yeah. is. So, but this, I did it like the old school way, like burnt the logs and the off, the offset smoker, regulated it with the dampers, got the temperature up to like 250 degrees, put the steaks on, smoked the steaks till I got them to 110 internal temperature and then seared them. They have, there's like a charcoal grill on the side. Oh my God, it's insane. It's the best. Since you started your carnivore there diet, there it is right there. That's so they made me that's little little charcoal grill on the side, and then the other one. If you go backwards, that's the actual grill itself. That guy did a fucking tremendous job. It's like a real work of art. It's, oh hell it's, yeah! It's incredible, uh, like just the craftsmanship. What's it called? Gen Centex. Centex. Central Texas. Yeah. Central Texas smokers. It's really. Really super, super well done. How do you think elk would do on something like that? Oh, it does great. I, I okay. cook elk on the Traeger all the time. I, mean, I don't think it'll be any different. I'm probably going to cook some elk on it tomorrow night. Okay. So I'm, I'm excited. I might try that out. Yeah. So what's up, Mike Glover? What's up, man? Nice Thanks to for meet you me. finally. I've been following your content. Yeah. Years. I think yeah. I saw you talk about um, a bug out that I did yes. from Phoenix to Canada, and you're like this crazy prepper guy. <laughs> yeah, like, you, yes. you went in one tank of gas. Or, yeah. Well, it wasn't one tank, but it was... Yeah. How did you do it? So uh, the idea um, from the company perspective was we need to demonstrate that bugging out um, is not realistic in the country. Like going from gas station to gas station would not be available. So if you bug out, you have to do it self-sustained with no support. So the idea was like, hey, get a Dodge 2500 pickup truck because the Toyota Tacoma is not gonna cut it. Um, we trimmed out everything, we put wood in the back, we we put tanks of gas, like an extra spare tank, 75 gallons, which extends your range massively. Um, and then we did an unsustained, or a, a self-sustained trip from Phoenix to the Canadian border, uh, no stops at a gas station, no stops for anything. Uh, so we slept out of the vehicle. Um, we we just did it on one tank of gas, essentially one tank of gas. We didn't. We had to run and prime fuel into the reserve from the reserve tank to the main tank. But it was just like to prove, like, hey man, this idea of bugging out from a bad situation to a better isn't really realistic. Mm. And with you, one tank, of gas. with one tank of gas. So like, if you have a hundred thousand dollar vehicle because you're like the overland bug out guy and you have a quarter tank of gas, then you have a big lead weight that's just nothing i mean you yeah. burn it to the ground when you, how far can you get with 75 gallon tank as a reserve um a couple thousand uh, miles um with your main tank so uh, most tanks 15 to 30 plus gallons and then a reserve tank titan has a reserve tank about uh, 30 gallons and then you can get an extended fuel tank like i i talk about this like it's um like it's innovative like it's new but if you live in rural Montana or rural anywhere in America, you roll with a 75-gallon tank in the back of your pickup truck because you'll go, you know, 500 miles before you see the next gas station. Mm. Now, what's interesting about this is it should be something that people should have in their mind. Like this kind of information, is it's there's nothing bad about having this kind of information, but wasn't there a thing where – some parts of the government were trying to label people as potential terrorists for yeah. preparing for things going bad. Yeah, that's yeah. There's a rabbit hole there. Um, first, anything on Facebook that was seen as extreme, think fringe, unique, think unique, different, then you were potentially labeled. So originally, um, we we teach canning and jarring at Fieldgrass Survival. I mean, mm -hmm. my family preparedness director Amber. Uh, focuses on families. So right. we teach canning and jarring. That was first flagged by Facebook and seen as um, extreme. And they even had a canning clip of Canning and jarring. Canning and jarring. That's extreme. That's extreme. Because if you're preparing, you're preparing for something. And if you're doing it domestically, then it potentially uh, could label you as a 
a militant or a, mil a militia or violent extremist, as I was labeled by Facebook. But what is that? That's so crazy that, like, having food, like, food prep. Well, what if uh, there's a natural disaster? What yeah. if it has nothing to do with some sort of a thing where you're, you know, trying to run from people? My my whole thing with um, the company Philcraft Survival is it's all about self-reliance and kind of cutting the umbilical cord or at least distancing yourself from institutions because when things fail, typically the institution breaks. It doesn't just fail, it breaks. And that causes a lot of issues. We've seen that recently with natural disasters and man-made disasters. But the education behind it is just learn how to take care of yourself long-term, short-term and long-term. And that, according to Facebook, at the time and now, is uh, extreme. How weird. So weird. A weird world. Yeah. And, and somebody who came from the military, like, I fit all the things. I'm a minority. I'm Asian. I'm half Korean. Um, I'm a veteran. I'm 100% service-connected disabled. So I fit all the categories. What does that mean, 100% service-connected disabled? So it means I'm, it's called total and permanent, which I am. It means I'm 100% disabled, according to the Veteran Affairs Office, but also um, total and permanent, which means you can't, like right now, if a veteran is, let's say, 100% disabled or 90% disabled, it's a weird system. You go in and you get your annual checkup. They could evaluate you and reduce your overall compensation and say, you're not 90 now, you're 60. And based, it, on... based on, they could say, your hearing is better than it was last time. You know, you, you picked up a couple decibels and we are going to reduce your pay and compensation and reduce your disability. So um, in the military, if you're 100% total and permanent, it means they can't screw with you. But I'm also, I have TBI and post-traumatic stress because of that TBI which is kind of what I wanted. Um, this is a weird one, but it, it, if you talk to a military guy, uh, an Andy Stump, um, all these guys that are, are buddies of mine, when they come out of the military, especially in special operations, they don't want to say they're disabled or they have a problem right? or they have post-traumatic stress. So I don't know if this is luckily, but I think it's better. TBI, because the symptoms of traumatic brain injury happen to be the same as post-traumatic stress, they could label you as having that. My concern, which is a concern even today, um, if they label me with PTSD and said, you're 100% connected because you have PTSD, we're going to take away your guns. So the red flag oh. laws and all that scare the hell out of me 